On this episode, we're going to dive in the tips and tricks to five businesses with seller financing, SBA, how to pair them together to structure your deals, to make high leverage acquisitions with little to no money out of pocket. And let's get started. Things they do day to day that will give you a viewpoint into something that other people can't see. So for example, I heard the other day of a guy who was working for a trucking company and then he managed to like add on a, a business which was kind of somehow playing a middleman between like loading up the trucks and getting it to and from the warehouse or something that literally only he would have seen and he was able to do that business and it's a now a viable business. So like there will be things in your life that you are seeing that other people won't get to see. So that's kind of way I like to start people thinking, like what are, what are those things that you know other people don't see? And then, stop me in a second, but partnerships you asked about as well. Partnerships is a really big deal for me. I do everything in partnerships. I have a strong belief that people go further in good partnerships than carrying the weight and reward solo. Like yes, of course, that you get more of the pie if you do it solo, but like, it's a long game this and you want to share that journey and also if you do get a big win you kind of want to share the wins as well um, so it's kind of nice to share the hard times and the good times with someone and I've, I've seen personally I'd be interested in your thoughts but I've seen the guys that win over the long term they do everything in partnerships and that's the model that I'm trying to create as well so on, on all of our deals so far we've done heavy seller financing between 60 and 100% seller financing on all the deals we've done we were considering SBA and we may consider doing an SBA next year on a deal just because I, I like the scheme, I know it's out there and I, I feel like I'd like to go through the process of doing an SBA but at the moment like we've had these opportunities come to us and we've been able to talk to the seller and it, what I would love about seller financing is the creative aspect. So sellers genuinely from my experience do not always want a lump sum of money straight away. If they've run a business successfully for 10, 20, 30 years they don't actually need a huge chunk of money in one go. They actually prefer it in many instances being paid out over time because they can save on capital gains tax and it's just better for them. Yes. Um, and so that, that has been my experience. People will say, oh, you can't do no money down deals. And like, yes, I, I don't want to be like some sort of guru preaching online, like buy companies all the time for no money down, but it is possible for sure. Um, I would say in terms of margins, I consider it, it's hard to give blanket answers because it depends on industries, but I consider 10% net income to kind of be almost like break even because there's a few things that come out after after net income, which I know is the bottom of the P&L. It doesn't factor in capital expenditure, doesn't factor in um, you know principal reductions or payments on debt and things like that, and taxes, of course. As, actually, no taxes above net income, but like there's certainly a couple things that doesn't factor in. So I think of 10% being kind of break even to me. So I think 15% net income is healthy. And then again, I can't talk about gross margin across the board, across all industries, but certainly in like construction type businesses or like home services, construction for sure, like 25% gross margin is, you, you definitely want 25 to 30%, I would say. And then in some home services, I think that needs to be a lot higher than 25, 30%. Yeah, and that's where it gets, that's where whoever's watching this in the future, this is where you gotta investigate when you're, I guess when you're defining your buy box, you're looking at this so you understand the, this, the construction sector, the home service sector, is what, what, what's the margins? What, what, what does an average margin look like? And, and that's where I think people really need to spend time in the beginning, right? Once they say, okay, I think this sector is good. And what are the numbers, what would the numbers realistically look look like in this? So as you're evaluating businesses, then you can see if this is a good fit, if the if the number, the expectations are good. And then also right now, or, you know, if you're not getting seller financing, you're kind of screwed with the SBA rates. If you're using a 7A and it's a variable, sometimes you can get a, a fixed rate 7A, but people that had, 7% money are now at 11, 11 and a half on some of these deals. So there's a lot of people hurting, I'm guessing right now, which in my mind might create some huge opportunities right now. I want to dive into partial change of ownership for business acquisition and how this new rule for the SBA guidelines can help you. So in the past, if you were a business owner selling your business, you couldn't be involved in the transaction at all. Meaning you had to be out of the picture, out of the equation. You sell the business, you're gone, right? Well now, with the partial change of ownership, 
a buyer can come in and the seller can go from say being a 100% owner down to being a 19% owner, that seller would not have to personally guarantee the loan and the new buyer could come in. So that's gonna help with leaving some of the equity in the deal, being creative. Also, if you're buying like an HVAC company and let's just say you're, you don't have your license in, it, in that particular state, you need a license, that seller can stay on for a 1% ownership interest and utilize the license in that capacity. So there's a lot of flexibility with this new uh, SBA rule change. So I was thinking, originally when I heard this, I was like, this is awesome. This is really gonna be a game changer. And then because the SBA rules have changed so much, I, I asked an underwriter, I said, is this, is this legitimate? This was a few months back. And she said, no, you have, we still have to do a six month look back. So that owner would have to still be a guarantor if they were 100% owner and now they're 19%, they would still have to guarantee. Well, it's now cleared up. That's not the case, which is great news. So essentially, when you're structuring your offers on business acquisition, you can leave the seller in and potentially have some kind of slower process of paying them off, leave their equity in the deal. You need the license. So this, this is a game changer for your SBA guidelines. And as a entrepreneur looking to acquire businesses, this is gonna be a very useful tool for you. Uh, there's a lot of new rules happening, uh, changes each month that I've seen. Uh, there's some new initiatives starting in November. Uh, the guarantee fee, for example, up to a million dollars. They're waiving the guarantee fee on the 7A, and then it's reduced up to $2 million. So there's a lot of advantages right now. And if you look into, into the rules, most of the rule changes are for the better. And I, I believe that we're gonna to continue to see a strong year in SBA financing. So if you're interested in business acquisition, franchise startup, these are all eligible for SBA financing. So anyway, if you have any questions on SBA financing, you can go to bookwithbo.com, you can schedule an appointment with me, and we can dive into all different caveats of SBA, how to structure the deals, you know, leaving uh, seller's equity on standby and so forth. So there's a lot of ways to structure these deals creatively, which basically allows you to buy these businesses with little to no money out of pocket if done correctly. Thanks a lot. We'll see you on the next episode. Are you trying to escape the W-2 rat race? Or have you always wanted to own your own business? Have you ever thought about owning a franchise? If so, franuniversity.com can help. Our training program teaches you everything you need to know about franchise ownership. You'll gain the skills and knowledge you need to succeed as a franchise owner. The best part? It's free to join. Go to franuniversity.com. Hey guys, Bo Exine here. If you enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe to this channel. We talk all things financing. I've been in the lending industry for over 20 years, and I'm happy to answer your questions and provide great content.